I can start. Can I start? Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, our colleagues here in the sal, and to all our online participants, which are, as we uh, learned, uh, in quite a high number, uh, which pleases us very much. So my, uh, my, my duty actually is to introduce to you uh, the DECRIS project, but as you can see, I entitled my presentation from AINFOSE to DECRIS, Strengthening Higher Education Institutions Collaboration. Uh, I should add in Europe, but we had also uh, connections with uh, colleagues outside of Europe, or better to say European Union, as we have uh, colleagues uh, from uh, St. Petersburg, from Australia, from uh, United States. So the collaboration is uh, the, the uh, main word. Uh, let me see. Uh, so, uh, European Enforce uh, actually is a um, brand <laughs> which, uh, 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 which uh, allows us to de develop and to strengthen our cooperation. When I say uh, our, I mean uh, the partners which were engaged in the several submission processes during the years. And we can go back uh, to uh, 2015 when we actually started to talk to each other. Uh, we changed partners during that time. And at the end, uh, we uh, managed to uh, to get approved the, the project idea with eight partners. Uh, some of them, as you will see, are still uh, together. So, which means that our uh, network uh, is uh, built and continues to, to work. So uh, I would just shortly state that something which might, uh, you, you can see from the title that this is uh, Enforce stands for European Information Science Education, uh, encouraging mobility and learning outcomes uh, harmonization. This is usually when you apply for Erasmus Plus project that you have to be in accordance with, uh, uh, with their requirements and the topics and the priorities they put uh, uh, forward. So we decided at that time that this would be a topic of uh, uh, great interest uh, to, to us. So uh, what I can say now after two years working together at Enforce project that Enforce heritage, so to say, is that we developed um, uh, Enforce website, uh, then uh, Enforce platform, then we developed uh, four open educational resources. We uh, had uh, three summer schools for students uh, from all partner institutions. Uh, and the partners were from, uh, I'm going from north to south, uh, from um, Sweden, uh, Germany, Slovenia, uh, Italy, Croatia, uh, Spain, and uh, Turkey. Uh, and we had a very good collaboration. Uh, so during the summer schools, we also had uh, students from all these partner institutions, which meant that our, our students actually started to cooperate, started to build their own uh, networks. And we still hear from them that <clears throat> they get together. Uh, we produce uh, uh, several documents. Uh, one was called evaluation framework, the other one didactic framework. And I'm very happy to say that uh, several of articles or several um, 
several of these uh, were uh, presented as uh, uh, research papers uh, in, uh, in a journal, which is very known in our field, uh, it's Education for Information, and we have Editor-in-Chief Fidelia with us uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, so we also prepared recommendations for entry requirements and learning outcomes in the uh, uh, library information science field. Field. And as I mentioned already, we strengthen the cooperation uh, between, uh, be between partners. Uh, <clears throat> After that, uh, after that project, which was uh, marked as a very uh, good one, we got uh, from evaluators, we got uh, high uh, marks. Uh, we decided to continue and we prepared another proposal, which was called EDLIS, uh, Adoption and Evaluation of Digital Learning via OERS open educational resources at European LIS higher education institutions with three main goals at that time. So uh, we wanted to, uh, why I am uh, saying this, you will see that similar uh, goals were in uh, this DECRIS project. So the goals were uh, to, access, to assess the current uh, state of the play uh, and the diversity approaches in the adoption, uh, adoption of digital learning, in particular how students and teachers perceive digital teaching and learning. This was before COVID. Yeah? So that was uh, uh, something we proposed in 2018. The other aim was to offer an interactive directory of LIS uh, open educational resources and the assessment uh, tool which will contribute to the evaluation uh, evaluation uh, processes uh, of uh, OIRS in order to assist and enrich uh, the offer, quality control and better use of uh, these resources at uh, European schools. Uh, we already knew then, as we know that uh, now nowadays that uh, the use of uh, open educational resources is not as uh, we would like to, to have it. So uh, the, um, the figures will be later presented and you will see that uh, we, we, were, we, we had right at that time. So, and we also wanted uh, in this project to continue organizing summer schools is an arena for exchange of experience and knowledge transfer. So that they were, these were our uh, aims and our vision, uh, but we failed. Yeah. So our project was not accepted because uh, they had money only for two projects in in our country as a main uh, main uh, coordinator, uh, but uh, we got very high uh, marks, uh, and uh, as we started to think, okay, we lost, but we will do it again. Uh, suddenly, an unexpected call uh, came, and so we were very, very happy. So we were invited, actually, by the Agency for European Projects and uh, Mobility, uh, Students' Mobility, uh, Mobility in general, sorry, uh, to uh, submit our proposal, but modified according to the new situation, which was uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics. Yeah. So uh, we did so, and I'm saying this because I, I, never, I never liked hiding things. I like things to be known. Once you fail, uh, the other ones you can uh, you can learn from your failure and you go you go further. So uh, the main issue with which was with the COVID nineteen pandemics was uh, actually how a higher education institution reacted. Yeah? Uh, what kind of approaches they took and what was recognized as a main uh, issue and how we are uh, supposed to detect the main problems. So having this in mind, uh, we uh, worked uh, 
not for a long time because uh, the call was issued in, uh, I think it was um, uh, September uh, uh, last year, and we had to submit it in two months time. But as I mentioned, they said, you have the project already, you just have to adapt it to our new uh, requirements. So this is the title of the project. You already know it. Uh, uh, and this is uh, the project inside the Erasmus uh, Key uh, Action 2, Cooperation for Innovation and the Exchange of Good uh, Practice. Uh, so uh, project, uh, uh, is when it was accepted, started, was supposed to start 1st of March. But we uh, were sure that the, we will not be able to do this, and agency agreed. So we started two months two months later. Uh, we have a website of the project. We have a, a platform, but this is something which Boris will tell uh, more uh, more about it. Um, so uh, main coordinators is a uh, main coordinator is as you already heard, University of Osijek, uh, Faculty of uh, Humanities and Social Sciences, to be more precise, uh, Department of Information Sciences, and the partners, our partners are, uh, and the main coordinator is Boris Bosantic, uh, our partners, Stiftung University uh, in Hildesheim, uh, Hildesheim in Germany, with Thomas Mandel as the uh, main coordinator there, uh, Universitat de Barcelona, Spain, with Cristobal Urbano, uh, University of Zagreb, uh, University's Computer Center, Serce, with Sandra Kuchena Softic, and we this time we had uh, four associate partners, and I'm very happy to say that we uh, managed uh, to invite and to get um, uh, get there um, confirm uh, from the University of Sarajevo in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, also University of Mostar, then uh, Victoria University Wellington, New Zealand and St. Petersburg State University of Culture in Russia. Uh, so these are, uh, I might say, these are, when you are associate partner, you try to learn from, uh, from the project and you try to uh, prepare yourself for another submission maybe with the same uh, colleagues or same institutions, maybe with someone with someone else. But uh, for now, uh, I can say that, uh, for example, with uh, we already had uh, Sarajevo uh, working very closely with us, and we had a very good uh, support by uh, St. Petersburg colleagues uh, uh, when we started with this online questionnaire. I think uh, 13, as I remember well, 13, um, institutions in uh, allies institutions in Russia responded. So that was also a way uh, to include Russia in European uh, European uh, programs and and plans. Uh, so uh, very shortly, uh, the decrees goal uh, is uh, the main goal is to create a framework for proper, adaptation of uh, open educational resources in general and in crisis situations in particular, making sure that they will improve the quality of the digital education and expand uh, the possibilities for collaboration and knowledge, knowledge sharing, which may decrease uh, the feeling of isolation, which we heard uh, just about a few minutes ago about, uh, and in, in such common situations like uh, lockdowns. Um, the second, uh, secondly, uh, we suppose that uh, our project uh, can support, uh, the results can support both teachers and students in their development, especially in terms of adaptive, personalized uh, and uh, smart uh, learning. 
also possibly we didn't uh, put it specifically but we mentioned it only possibly it could lead uh, to lead uh, to cost savings and uh, repo uh, reposing uh, finances to other educational activities and resources which uh, may further uh, reduce the existing gaps uh, and barriers uh, so uh, talking about uh, open educational resources we hope that uh, we might produce some uh, which could be use, uh, used uh, by many uh, as adaptive uh, flexible and small, smart tools and uh, finally finally uh, to improve students particip participation in the virtual classroom uh, better to say or to be precise, generate appropriate level of interest and engagement, uh, which is also one of the common uh, issues in the context of digital uh, education. Target groups for our project are students and teachers uh, at partner uh, higher educational institutions uh, uh, that offer programs in library and information sciences. I usually put it uh, uh, between brackets because there are so uh, there, there is a number of schools in Europe and everywhere in the world nowadays with so many different names. Yeah, but when you when you come to the issue of what we are teaching, what we are researching, uh, this is probably the the most common. I could have had documentation, for example, which is uh, uh, specificity in in Barcelona. Yeah, but. Uh, it seems that uh, LIS could fit uh, the, the best. Yeah? Uh, so uh, we wanted to, um, uh, to improve the use of uh, oils and the ways prom for promoting, enriching and improving of digital education for crisis situation, but also beyond because we uh, we don't know which kind of crisis situations we might have in a year or two. So this is something which we uh, we say uh, with COVID, we say now ah, we are looking how COVID influenced, et cetera, et cetera. But who knows what else might happen in the near uh, future. Motivation actually for partners uh, was, uh, uh, the uh, the view that digital education has the potential to provide better teaching and learning opportunities, especially in regards to the unpredictable situation circumstances such as COVID, which uh, revealed uh, that many has uh, faced problems of uh, technical, so socio-psychological and didactic uh, nature. And uh, your vice rector uh, nicely put uh, some uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very encouraging uh, uh, encouraging the decisions you made, which is really good to, uh, uh, to know uh, that uh, university gov governing bodies are really thinking seriously how to solve uh, the problems uh, which, we are, which we are facing now, especially uh, students, but I would dare to say teachers as well because uh, many times we say uh, they are overworked, they are too tired, there are so many, uh, so many tasks they, they, could, uh, they have to perform these days. Uh, I lost uh, my, okay. <clears throat> so uh, the, the, the whole project is planned in two phases. Uh, one uh, first place phase, uh, we intend uh, to produce two intellectual outputs, uh, which we called EO, uh, 
and this first one, first EO is a state of the play of the use of OERS at European higher educational institutions. You see that it was similar or almost the same as in uh, IDLIS. So our aim with uh, this intellectual task uh, is to investigate uh, the ways and strategies uh, which uh, higher educational institutions adopted in or have been adopting, better to say, in relation to innovation objectives in making uh, or better use in time of crisis and otherwise. And the intellectual output too is uh, to analyze uh, analysis of the perception of distance education and use of OERS by students and teachers of partner uh, inst at partner institutions do during COVID-19 uh, lockdown with a list of observed problems uh, as well as perks and examples of good uh, practice. Uh, in phase two, we plan to produce and uh, justify critical factors for evaluation of existing ORs from the point of view of uh, their use during the COVID-19 uh, crisis and special periods without face-to-face -face, uh, teaching. Uh, next is uh, to produce one new uh, open educational resource because we already have four from AINFOSEP, which we uh, produced uh, then, but we want also to improve this, uh, uh, these four existing ones and to add another one, which is actually uh, dealing with the digital uh, curation uh, of digital and analog uh, documents and information and also uh, produce uh, an apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship uh, framework in order to create new models for online student practice. Yeah? Because we also uh, face the problem uh, how we will uh, send our students to their practical work uh, in which institutions or could we develop online uh, uh, exercises or online uh, way, ways to do it uh, online, which we, in to certain to certain extent, already uh, developed uh, for some uh, for some courses. Uh, so uh, these are the main uh, the main uh, phases and the main intellectual outputs uh, and uh, expected uh, co expected contribution of uh, the whole project uh, is to uh, build to to contribute to building uh, of inclusive higher education systems and promoting internationalization and this is connected with these priorities, horizontal uh, priorities uh, from, uh, from the call. Uh, also, the CRIS project is focused on innovative digital practice uh, practices experienced during the academic years 2019 uh, and 20 and 2021 during lockdown and other uh, mitigation periods without complete lockdown, but without face-to-face uh, uh, -face classes. And in particular, uh, we, uh, we are concerned with uh, how to improve digital competencies uh, because I, I uh, uh, fully, I'm fully, uh, aware of, or I would like to, uh, to, um, to say that uh, in library and information science field, uh, we are uh, called actually to offer courses to other departments because we know how to deal with uh, information and media literacy, which is now very, very important. Uh, so, and uh, we also think of new innovative curricula and educational methods 
and international to uh, further develop international cooperation and also cooperation uh, with the business sector. Uh, this is for me not a buzzword when I said business, I really mean that uh, in our field, uh, there are not only public institutions like libraries, archives, documentation centers and so, but we also have uh, computer companies. We also have at each university, we have uh, uh, units which deal with um, how to organize digital learning uh, and so and so. So our students uh, could uh, really contribute uh, to this uh, and uh, go also go to these companies and uh, gain more experience in a so-called real, real sector. So this is in short a uh, presentation of, uh, of the project to um, our um, uh, followers on, uh, online. And for some of you who are not, who are not um, uh, familiar with it, uh, but uh, after, uh, after Boris uh, is, uh, say, is, will, share, will share a few words about the platform, Oh. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, then uh, uh, Anita will uh, say uh, some some more. Will share some more information about the summer school which we held uh, two months before uh, in Osijek. Okay, Boris, please. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tatiana. And I will show you how uh, we uh, will organize our all activities that I mentioned through our website uh, and uh, appropriate uh, the Chris platform. Yes. As, as you can see, you can find the basic information about projects on the uh, home page of our project. Uh, thanks, Boris Badurina, who created this web page. And we have ordinary navigation bar. And here is the news. And we are very proud to the Gemma Santos, who is a member of our team for Barcelona team. For example, he's, a, uh, uh, he's one of the year's winners of UNESCO Air Implementation Award for Excellence of our topic, that is the topic of the project uh, Open Educational Resources. On the um, page about a project, you can find uh, very basic information about a uh, project uh, uh, and uh, all things. Uh, anyway, if you want to uh, to get more information about the project, uh, you can find uh, the contact emails of project managers. Yes, Tatiana and me here. And uh, Tatiana mentioned uh, the aims of the projects, the main aims of the projects. So we organize uh, them through the six intellectual outputs. And every intellectual output uh, has a description here and uh, it's okay uh, the aim of each intellectual output is uh, is mentioned here and i will be shortly tatiana mentioned all uh, what is important about them uh, but for example uh, this the goal of this intellectual output too is to get insights about the students and teacher trainers' attitudes towards digital education. We make a deal about this uh, intellectual project in these days, this in Barcelona. And what we will have done, this is the intellectual output one, uh, which we will present tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we, uh, we have uh, four different multiplier events, and this this is the first multiplier events and which held in Barcelona, and after that uh, we have uh, another three 
uh, one uh, will be held in Sofia and Bulgaria uh, next May 2022. And the third uh, multiplier event will be in Zagreb, in Croatia, uh, in Srce, in organizing our partner Srce. And finally, uh, the four, four multiplier events held in Osijek, University of Osijek. Uh, that is a final conference of the whole project and titled International Conference on Digital Transformation and Inclusiveness of the Universities in the Time of Crisis Situation. So it will be held, I, we expect, 2023 in May, uh, in May, okay. So, uh, 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 we have another activities, summer schools. One is uh, already held, summer schools in Osijek, and uh, the next will be uh, held in uh, Hildesheim in Germany. And you can find basic information about those summer schools. And uh, uh, Anita will say uh, uh, shortly about uh, summer school in Osijek. So, uh, Tutorial one and tutorial two is the special activities on this project. And we are just finished the activity of tutorial one, University of Barcelona this, uh, this day, yes. Uh, and uh, it was very useful uh, to, to uh, learn something new. And uh, it's all connection with our, of, of the, uh, our uh, open educational resources. So uh, these activities, summer schools and tutorials are connected with platform. Uh, we organize all materials through this platform. Uh, and you can see only the uh, home page of this the Chris platform. Uh, here's the basic information about this activity, summer schools, as you can see. And here is courses we organized through our summer schools, introduction to summer, introduction to information science. You can see professors, research methodology, information science, principles of information science, seeking and retrieval, evaluation of information sciences, and creation of analogical and digital material. Here is the uh, special course tutorial one in Barcelona, and uh, uh, there is a material of this tutorial. All platform will be. I think in the next days, uh, all content will be free. You can make free access uh, with Creative Commons share alike license. But uh, uh, I, I must warn you that, uh, uh, that we will uh, have final versions of those presentations after the uh, second summer school, which held in Hildesheim next, next year. So, and I think that's it for me. And now uh, uh, here is the Anita. Uh, thank you, Boris. Uh, good afternoon. I will give a short report on the Chris European Summer School on Information Sciences, which was held in Osijek. Uh, from 6th till 10th September this year at uh, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences in Osijek, Croatia, uh, the Chris European Summer School on Information Sciences was held in vivo. Uh, within Erasmus Plus project, the Chris Digital Education for Crisis Situations, times when there is no alternative. Here are some pictures of our beautiful city of Osijek, uh, a small city uh, in Eastern Croatia. Uh, the focus of summer school was digital education in crisis situations, especially design and implementation of open educational resources at higher education institutions in a library and information sciences during crisis situations such as COVID-19 pandemic. 
the main goal of summer school was to introduce students to the new topics and themes uh, in the field of information science and specific goals were the exchange of experience and the examples of good practice between partner higher education institutions, as well as the, the creation of a repository of new open educational resources. Professor Bosancic, uh, PhD, the project coordinator and uh, full professor Tatiana Paracielusic, the first day uh, of uh, summer school opened the summer school. Uh, we have 22 students uh, from Spain, Germany, Bulgaria, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia uh, they, uh, who participated at uh, summer school. Professor uh, Juan Hoboté from University of uh, Barcelona talked about introduction into scientific method, uh, LIS literature panorama. Uh, full professor Tanya Todorova from University of Library Studies and Information Technology uh, from Sofia talked about copyright and online learning. And here is a picture also of Professor Juan uh, uh, Hoboté in our lecture room uh, at our faculty. A full professor Thomas Mandel from University of Hildesheim introduced students into information retrieval systems and organization of information. Also, here is a picture of Professor Thomas Mandel. Uh, also, full professor Mario Hibert uh, and Emir Vajzovic, assistant professor from University of Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, held an interesting lecture about media and information literacy and the algorithmic term, uh, what's LIS got to do with it? Uh, Irena Jandric from University Computing Center, University of Zagreb, or, uh, from Croatia, or Srce, talked about uh, evaluation of open educational resources. Also, uh, the lecturers from our department, the Department of Information Sciences, from our, our faculty, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences in Osijek in Croatia, held lectures and workshops. So, so Boris Bosančić, um, Anita Papić, uh, Boris Badurina, Damir Hasenaj, Miljana Mičunović, Kristina Feldvari, Tomislav Jakopec, and Ines Korvat held uh, lectures or workshops. Uh, they covered topics uh, such as uh, introduction to information science, research and methodology in information science, principles of information seeking and retrieval, evalu evaluation of information services and curation of analogical and digital material. Uh, also, students visited IT company Kobe. Uh, as you know, um, as you maybe know, uh, Osijek is not only a student city, Osijek is also a software city. Uh, so this is um, one organization of IT companies, uh, which, uh, uh, which are potential employers of our students. Uh, so uh, students who um, participated in summer school uh, uh, visited IT company Kobe and discussed with a lecturer from a private sector, Marko Vukobratovic, PhD, uh, issues related to the very actual topic uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Uh, also, besides the formal part of the summer school, participants, participants uh, enjoyed a rich social program and explored the cultural history of Osijek and Slavonia and Baranja. Uh, we were uh, in Kopački Rit, uh, one very beautiful trip, uh, and also uh, another trip, uh, we were uh, in a um, uh, cultural muse museum of Vučedol near Vukovar. Uh, students were very thrilled with these uh, trips. And at the end, we had a gala dinner in the, one beautiful restaurant uh, called the Black Pig uh, or Tsarna uh, Svinja in Croatian. Uh, and we have a really nice time as something like uh, also we had a nice time uh, here in Barcelona. Thank you for your attention. If you have uh, any question, or we can just continue. Hmm? Do, we have, uh, do we have questions from there? Uh, does someone want to ask something from here? From the... Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. 
No, it seems that uh, we don't have questions uh, at the moment. I am sure that uh, tomorrow morning when we will present uh, the results of our first intellectual output, uh, there will be more, uh, more questions uh, for the discussion also, uh, because this, this was uh, just an introduction uh, to what we, uh, what we have been doing and what we plan to, uh, to do in uh, the next uh, year, year and a half. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. And we can now invite uh, Fidelia. Okay, uh, I will. Thank um. you.